So I've just been rustling through Julie's closet <laughs> and found this amazing garment. Can you tell us about this? So this is from the 2013 Spring Summer Yves Saint Laurent uh, runway show and it is a robe that I found in a Good Sammy's store for $30 and it still has the tags attached. That is incredible. So that's the That's the back, back with a beautiful and tassel. And the front comes around here with little arm slits to fit through. I feel like one of the Olsen twins when I wear this. $35. Yeah. Amazing. It weighs a ton. It weighs a ton. <laughs> but when you wear it, often often um, garments that are really well constructed, so when you actually put them on, you don't feel the weight. No, you they? really don't. It just it feels light and it feels all silk and it's silk lined, and it's just a really heavy, good quality silk. But it's the the beading, the hand beading, that gives it its weight. I think. Yeah, um, but oh it's just God, exquisitely it's... made. How many times have you worn it? I haven't worn it out yet, but I've worn oh. it a few times around the house. <laughs> sit, sit there on the couch. Yes, like, pretty much. Right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What a find. Yes, that was quite a lucky find. <laughs> so I don't buy my shoes second hand. Are, you, are these all second hand shoes? Those are all second hand shoes. Uh, I can see one pair that I bought brand new down there, a pair of boots from Tony Bianco when I was wearing very uncomfortable shoes in Melbourne and got caught out, so I had to <laughs> buy some shoes. But yes, they're all second hand. So I bought those at a Salvo store for $35 back in 2015 when I first moved back to Perth. And again, snakeskins just come back in. It's really popular and I've got those to uh, hang on to. Oh my goodness. Um, but yes, everything that you see here. They just... They're all Mint. second hand. These are Gucci. Yeah. These are Roger Vivier. Oh, aren't they beautiful? Um, Dolce & Gabbana. How much did you pay for these? Probably loved, I thought they were 25. Um, some Louis Vuitton. I think I paid 80 for those. Um, I paid 200 for those. Right. But they're Gucci heeled loafers on a yeah. Facebook page, so I was very happy to find those. And I paid 100 for those at the Salvos, but worth it. You wonder why we buy new, really. <laughs> I understand that some people have an issue with secondhand shoes, and I understand why, but I disinfect them, and I'm really happy with, with what I find. So, you know, most of them are in good quality. They generally don't resell secondhand shoes if they're in really poor quality. Mm. You know, that's not something that they do, but I've had some really great designer finds. Mm. My father always used to call it dead men's clothes, which is <laughs> not very attractive. But I think that's what it was probably once upon a time, but not anymore. No. Not well, anymore. Well, I think back then people had their clothes for, for life or they till they passed on. And so, yeah. But now with the churn that we've got and that continuous replacement. Absolutely. And there are people changing things season after season, you know, people who've Got lots of money by a beautiful wardrobe full of brand new season clothes. As soon as the season's over, they they donate it or they get rid mm. of it in some fashion. So yeah, there's lots of bargains out there to be had. Yeah, I was in um, in a vintage store in Chelsea, in London, oh, and the clothes in London were would incredible. be true. <laughs> That's incredible. What yeah. people give away? Ah, uh, it would be amazing. Just the vintage over there would yeah. be incredible. Could add to my Doc Martin collection, oh. which is already quite sizable. <laughs> Secondhand docks. <laughs> uh, work dresses and sort of fancy skirts. <laughs> where do you where where do you work that you can wear a chill skirt? Um, well, I wear that under a lot of other things, but I go. You know, I like going to just any events that can oh. take us out at night time. You know, fashion events, movies. You know, I like going to. Um, you know, anywhere, any opportunity, I have to dress up really. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I also beautiful. don't think you need an excuse to dress up. This is Anthea Crawford. Right. Vintage Anthea Crawford. So I don't think you need an excuse. I think you should wear things like this to the shops if you want to. Oh. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, why not? Much. That's what I like. Um, now, what have we got over here? I did actually do a closet tour video on my Instagram not too long ago. So, um, God, it's so much fun. <laughs> so shirts. All my t-shirts hiding in under there. 
baskets. Um, sort of these are the things that get interchanged from summer to winter. So at the moment it's still jumpers, long sleeve shirts, cardigans, and mostly cashmere. Mm -hmm. As I said, I do really like you know, cashmere and silk. Uh, my dressing gown, which you probably don't want to see. Um, trousers, mostly work. It's not a label something. So yeah. five dollars, seven dollars, <laughs> seven dollars for corduroy ones. There's something That's I bought new. Them. One thing I bought new <laughs> corduroys. is a pair of high waisted vintage looking corduroys because I could not find this colour, shape, yes. and fabric in a vintage store, although I looked and looked and looked. Very so, 70s. Very 70s. I did look into their sustainability policy, which I read online before I purchased, which I would recommend if you purchase them new that you do, and um, and they sort of stuck with my ethics and values as well. So I quite like those, but that's one thing I've bought. So do you use the Good On You app? <laughs> yes, love yep. the Good On You app. Yeah, that's really good. Um, but also lots of companies have it on their website, their own sort of sustainability policy, being aware of greenwashing and um, you know, reading into the backstory and who owns that company and make sure that they're all their ethics do align, mm. I think is worth doing. But um, if I do that and I'm happy with the outcome, then I'll, I'll happily buy something new. But most of the time I don't have the money to buy new, so that's why I buy second hand. Mm. I struggled a little bit with buying this jacket, although it was second hand. It was from um, a brand that's owned by a conglomerate. Right, yep. And then... You know, you look at look at it from that perspective, and and the business model of of churn, yeah. huge production. And although I'm buying it second hand, I still had that kind of moment like, is it still supporting yeah. that business model, even though you're buying it the next generation do? Yeah, I agree with you, and I think most of the reason I don't buy fast fashion second hand is because it doesn't last very long. It's not very good quality. If I find something that is made by a fast fashion brand and I think it's good quality and I know if I look after it, it will last, I would happily buy it. It's already in rotation. Mm. It's already out there and it can certainly do with being given a second life. But my problem is usually the quality of these things don't stand up or don't last. Yeah. And that's one of the problems that we're going to face in the future is that we've got all these textiles that know obviously are out there that aren't going to last that are just going to be good for landfill or downcycling in some fashion and we're just going to be facing a really really big problem so the idea I think from the outset is to buy good quality only buy what you love and what you're going to wear go back to those values of keeping things for a really long time so that we use them up and wear them out and um, put some more value into it I think that's one of the things that fast fashion has done is devalue something that used to be such a precious commodity I and mean, when you look back in you know ancient times and cloth and fabric and weaving was such a highly valued skill that took so much time and investment it was a currency yeah it was a commodity that you could buy and sell property with with fabric and cloth because it just it was so highly valued and something we've done is just devalue you know with fast fashion or with this churn and burn situation is devalue something that's really should have a greater worth Mm. which is so unfortunate and that's why we're going to be facing such a big pollution problem from the textile industry. It kind of negates the skill that's required really does. to make really to make the yarn, it. to make the fabric, to make the garment. Yep. Yeah. And that's why garment workers are so underpaid because their work is not valued. Farmers are underpaid, garment workers are underpaid because their work that was once such a precious commodity has become so devalued mm. and, you know, sort of pushed to the side. Um, in favour of other things, it just it doesn't make any sense to me. It's such, such an intensive, time-consuming uh, investment. It's something that we should be treasuring and valuing and hanging on to and making last and looking after and handing down to our children. So, yeah, fast fashion sort of doesn't really make much sense to me. So if you're in a new city, it's one of the first things you do, check out the vintage stores. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Not that I go to new cities very often, but yes, I went to Melbourne last year and hooked up with a very lovely lady I met on Facebook called Rialana, who took me around all of the her favourite op shops in Melbourne. She was very kind to give over a couple of days of her time to take me op shopping around, her, uh, wow. around Melbourne, yeah. which is great. And I'm also off to Sydney in a couple of weeks' time 
and already have a trip around Newtown planned for one of the days. And I'm only there for about four days. Right. <laughs> one of the days will be op shopping and, and vintage shopping around Newtown. So because they're becoming sort of tour events, aren't they? They really are. Yeah. yeah, and there's always somebody who's happy to take, you know, take you shopping if that's what they're doing with their day. People spend all day, every day, op shopping sometimes. So yeah, hook up with someone in the area that you're going to. Check out what's on the Facebook page in that area. And, um, yeah, go on a tour or catch up with people who want to show you the best finds and the best shops that they know of. So oh, great. It's, it's great. fun, yeah. It's a really nice community, the Up Shopping community. Fantastic. I have to fit that in while we're here. Oh. <laughs>